Hello, ni hao. Welcome to Warwick. My name is Zhiyan Guo. In Chinese way, you would call me Guo Lao Shi, which is surname plus occupation. Ni hao, wo shi shang lao shi. Ni hao, wo shi zheng lao shi. Ni hao, wo shi chen lao shi. Huan yi ni lai hua wei da xue xue xi zhong wen. Why study Chinese? Worldwide, there are over 873 million people who speak Chinese as their first language. Learning Chinese will enable you to engage with them better and explore Chinese culture, which is one of the oldest and richest in the world. Studying Chinese opens the ways into understanding the politics, history, economy, and literature of China, and increases the opportunity to work in one of the most important economies in the world. So you will be ahead of the game in competing for a job. In this introduction to the language, I have very good news for those who are not very keen on old word-ending conjugations and agreements in European languages. In Chinese, we don't need this complicated grammar at all. There's no change required in terms of gender, tense, plural, and articles. For example, in Chinese, you would say he like eat apple, she like eat apple, I like eat apple, and even we like eat apple. There's no need to change anything but the person. Even better, you can literally say like eat next to each other, which will convey the meaning perfectly. So you can be assured there's no need to conjugate in Chinese. But why is Chinese said to be so difficult? Well, it's different from other languages in terms of tones in speaking and the characters in written scripts. For characters, it is not impossible. Look at these characters are for fruits. Most of them have the common part, which means grass. As they often appear on the top of a character, we call it grass top. Whenever you see a character with it, you can make an educated guess to comprehend its meaning. In our learning, we start with all these little strokes. So it's definitely achievable. In Warwick, you take Chinese as a minor, 25% of your degree, while majoring in modern languages, economics, linguistics, politics, and international studies. You learn Chinese from beginner to advanced levels, including business Chinese. You will be able to develop listening, reading, speaking, writing skills. Throughout your study, you have averaged four hours per week and one hour of culture in your final year. In the third year, students take an optional year abroad, which I will talk about later. Taking a minor pathway in Chinese, you will learn Chinese culture throughout your degree. It is integrated into your language classes during the first two years and given a separate hour per week in your final year. Cultural learning goes beyond the classroom. We had activities such as uh, Chinese Culture Week, traditional music concerts, Chinese New Year celebration. When funding allows, we also extend our learning outside the university. This year, we went to Montagis, France, to explore the historical sites where Chinese communist pioneers developed ideas for a new China. These types of activities offer ample fieldwork experience. Learning Chinese in Warwick you will have many opportunities to go to China. First, two-week summer internship in Xi'an. Our work experience is at the Shanxi History Museum, one of the big four in China, and free accommodation is provided by a local university. Next is a four-week summer course in Beijing, which you have been running since 2008. Students not just learning Chinese on university campus, they also have fun classes in Taiji and calligraphy. Also, they visit uh, famous places such as Forbidden City and Great Wall. The above two short-term programs are very helpful for those who study three languages to join during summer, since they spend two half-a-year periods in their main language-speaking countries. Then we have two semester-long destinations for students whose degree allow them to stay in China for a bit longer. One is Harbin, where students will study Chinese in Harbin Institute of Technology, one of the top and oldest universities in China, and can also work as a teaching assistant to the university students there. Another choice for a semester abroad is in Qingdao. 
In addition to learning Chinese and teaching English, students will be given training in teaching English as a foreign language in China. In both Harbin and Qingdao, accommodation is provided free. Finally, there are university-wide links between Warwick and China, which SMLC students can use for their year abroad too. I would say that like the majority of students who are going to be starting at university, that you're bound to feel a little bit apprehensive. You also hear that Chinese is one of the most difficult languages to learn, However, I'd say that if you've got that passion for learning new languages, then that's bound to shine through above all else. Before I came to Warwick, to be honest, I was expecting learning Chinese to be a bit like banging my head against a brick wall. Uh, I thought it was going to be really difficult, but I wasn't really sure what to expect apart from that. Uh, I think once I got here, I was actually really surprised, pleasantly surprised. Um, it's a challenge, but it's also really interesting and manageable. Honestly, before I came to Warwick, I actually had no intention at all of studying Chinese. I was originally going to study Spanish, French and Italian, but when I came to one of the open days, one of the professors said to me, why limit yourself to three European languages? Which is something that I hadn't thought about before, and it really stuck with me after the open day. And he also said to me, are you musical? And I said, well, yeah, because I've always played musical instruments and I sing. So he said, well, you'd probably be good at Chinese then because it's a very musical language because there are four tones and you have to make sure that your tones are right so that you don't mix up words. Because one thing that's always stuck with me since learning it at Warwick is that tones are so important. If you say Lu with fourth tone, that means green. But if you say Lu with second tone, that means donkey. So it's really important to get your tones right so that things aren't misunderstood and you end up saying something that you didn't want to say. Before I started studying Chinese at Warwick, Chinese seemed like an enormous behemoth of a language. It had a different writing structure, different grammar, tones, and it seemed so different to English. But once I started learning it, I found out that it was not actually such a beast. It was easier than it looked. Before coming to Warwick, I thought that learning Chinese would be uh, quite complicated and that it would take a long time to see any progress. But since I've started at Warwick, I've realised that it's not as complicated as it seems. I've learned a lot in a short amount of time. I was a bit sceptical about learning Chinese because I had never learned a non-European language before. However, once I started learning the basics like how characters are formed, how they're pronounced. Chinese became a language I could see myself succeed in. So, I used to think that Chinese was this really different, difficult language, but now that I've started learning it a bit, I found there are actually a few similarities to English, and especially grammatically, it can be simpler at times. Actually, I had no idea what to expect before coming to Warwick, and I think this is really normal. Uh, I'd never studied Chinese before, and all I had heard was that it's completely different to English, or any other European languages for that matter, and that it's a challenge to learn. Uh, and then when I started at Warwick, I realised that although it was harder than any language I studied before, uh, it became much easier if I was persistent with studying, and then I began to enjoy the challenge. Um, the opportunities that are made available to you from simply making new friends to international opportunities, um, Chinese really does open up a lot of doors to your future. Uh, I'd say probably learning how to write Chinese characters. Uh, that's the bit that I find most challenging but also the most rewarding when I could finally start writing them from memory. I think the best thing about learning Chinese was getting to learn about the culture because I think at Warwick they really put an emphasis on learning about the culture and not just the language. For me personally, the best thing about learning Chinese was the large number of opportunities that I had to study abroad in Beijing and Harbin and to see traditional Chinese sites such as the Forbidden City.
For me, the best thing was how interactive the lessons are. We did so many different activities that weren't just reading from a textbook. Uh, the best thing about learning Chinese was actually going to China and immersing myself in Chinese culture. So at both of these places, I had free accommodation and at Harbin University, uh, I had four hours of Chinese every day, which meant that I improved uh, a lot in a short amount of time. Also, the department was very supportive, uh, which meant that the experience was less daunting. Definitely the best thing is just how rewarding it is. I love that out and about I can read a character on my phone. It's, it's super rewarding. Uh, like learning any language, it can be really fun and interesting to find out about the way different cultures work. Uh, so my favourite way to do this was by watching Chinese films and also by listening to Chinese music. So this way it often didn't even feel like studying. Well, from the teaching staff and support to the array of future opportunities and things like intercultural immersion, um, it was definitely one of the best decisions that I could have made. Um, and I would say to anyone who's deciding whether or not to try Chinese, to just put any feelings of apprehension behind you and to simply go for it. Uh, I'd say definitely should do it. Honestly, I would just say go for it. I think it's an amazing opportunity. You get to learn a completely different language you learn about a completely different culture and it's something that employers really like because it's a very like it's a growing language like people employers want their employees to be able to speak that language and it looks very good on your CV if you can speak a language like Chinese. My advice would be try it. It's an extremely rewarding language. The more you learn the easier it gets and also it's the best linguistic investment for the future, considering China's global rise. I would say, don't think that learning Chinese is too hard. It's definitely possible. If you can't decide whether to try Chinese or not, I would suggest that don't underestimate your abilities too soon without even trying it. I know it's easy to look at Chinese and think, it's too difficult for me, I can't do it. But if you try it, you'll be surprised with what you can achieve. It's also a language that makes you stand out from other students. So, I would say do it just because you get the tools to be able to study it. So, you know, even if you don't carry on, you could still independently carry on. And regardless, just how, because of how different it is to English, I think it really broadens your worldview just by seeing the way that uh, Chinese views the world. Uh, because of my positive experience of studying Chinese, I would always encourage people to just give it a go. However, I know that not everyone will have the same experience as me. Uh, for the first two years at Warwick, progress felt slow because we were learning an entirely new way of writing and speaking. And it was actually during my year abroad in third year that I began to feel confident with my level. Now, this felt quite frustrating at times, but it was also really satisfying to have that moment where everything clicked together. So I think that the most important thing is firstly to be up for a challenge and secondly to be willing to patiently pass obstacles. Uh, if you are, then learning Chinese should be fine.